What's up, everybody? This is Sean here with Morning Lifter. Thanks for tuning in. I've got another great podcast episode with uh, one of the strongest around, I would say, at least that I've seen. Um, and uh, she is a, a, a veteran and uh, an all around excellent mom and power lifter and just incredible person, Landry Peden. Uh, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me. So I, uh, I, I wanted to just kind of have a, a little quick chat with you about just your powerlifting journey in general, because, uh, and especially I, I want to pick your brain about the stigma of women and powerlifting, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard that question before, and I'm, I'm sure you have a pretty good answer for it, but, um, you know, kind of, can you walk me back from your times in um, what it was the army, correct? Yeah. So can you, can you walk me back through like your decision to join the army and, and how did that kind of transform you and, and was powerlifting before or after that? If you can just kind of give me some, some background on that, then we can go from there. Yeah. Um, so I joined the military back in 2004. Um, my main motivation was my grandfather was basically like the only father figure that I really had. Um, and he was a paratrooper stationed at Fort Bragg uh, back in the day. And so like, I've always looked up to him and he passed away in May of 2004. And I went down to the recruiting office in June and signed up. Um, I was in the delayed entry program, so I didn't leave until September, but um, super glad that I did. Um, it was kind of funny though, cause like up until then I was like, I'm never going in the military. Like that's crazy. But then it's like, the more I thought about it, I was like, I think that's what's right for me. So I didn't want to be stuck in a small town. And like, I graduated with 116 kids. So I was like, it's time to like branch out. Yeah. And, um, so I joined the army. Um, I didn't have any like real power lifting experience before that other than I did like some fun little state meet my senior year of high school um no training for it but I ended up taking fifth out of 25 women and my coach was so mad at me because I like didn't like really try because yeah. I was, like didn't understand it because sure. like, I played basketball and like all sorts of other sports and then it was like he goes I'll fail you if you don't do this meet and I'm like great okay <laughs> So I just like go in the weight room and he'd be like, okay, you're squatting today. I'm like, okay, like <laughs> it wasn't really structured. Um, so that was like the only time I did like a power lifting thing before the military. Um, and then when I was in the army, it's kind of weird, but like I ended up being a competitive runner. <laughs> so I ran on the army 10 miler um, while I was stationed at Fort Drum. I did just a little bit of like basic accessory work just to kind of offset some of the muscle wasting from the running mm. um and then i ended up i got out of the military in may of 2013 and then i kind of like fell off um i because i i'm diagnosed with ptsd and i kind of had a few years where that was starting to really come out um i actually stopped working out altogether um, I was over 200 pounds, uh, super depressed. And in 2017, I finally got help from the VA and some good friends got me into CrossFit. And so I started doing competitive CrossFit. Um, it was nice to have kind of that sense of community again that I lost from being in the military. And then my boyfriend, <laughs> John over here, was like, you're really strong for a CrossFit fitter why don't you try powerlifting and I'm like why not <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'm like I've always been like a multiple sport athlete and just kind of bouncing around from thing to thing like I love sports and being competitive um and so in May of 2019 I found my way to Alpha with John and um my coaches Doug and Candy and I've been like all in since then. It's been awesome. That's, that's really cool. I mean, when you first started off at CrossFit, 
Mm -hmm. um, there's always like the, uh, I don't know, the, because both sports are really competitive, but it's like, it's almost like there's a line drawn in the sand. What, what was it about uh, powerlifting that kind of made you shift away from, from CrossFit? Um, my, well, one, <laughs> I wasn't getting beat up anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to be 36. So like, I don't recover as well as I did sure. um, back then. And um, I, uh, I like the, the drive to perfect the lifts. Yeah. Um, Cause technique is very important. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing with CrossFit. It's like, there's so many different elements and movements and you're never going to be an expert at any of them. And you can be like good enough or like, this is my wheelhouse. This is not my wheelhouse. But like with powerlifting, I love that. Just like you're perfecting every lift and just like, the strength building is really fun too. Cause like with CrossFit, I love the endurance part of it, but I wasn't getting any stronger because I wasn't able to recover like I can with powerlifting. Mm -hmm. So like I wasn't getting the same benefit as I am now. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the gym that you have in your garage, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, that's, I mean, you guys seem to have just about everything under the sun that you could possibly want. Yeah. Uh, and so so it, depend, it depends on which videos you're watching. Most of our actual lifting videos are from Alpha. Okay. You know, which is our coach's garage gym. They built their house to spec. The ground floor is 2,400 square feet and they live upstairs and the ground floor is the gym. So. Now, <laughs> our, our garage gym is just a regular three car garage gym but combo rack thousand pounds and kilos two full sets of texas bars every single specialty bar you could probably want other than a duffalo bar but we'll work on that <laughs> um, lap, lap pull down um a functional uh inspire functional trainer hamstring curl extension i have a rower for my cardio <laughs> yeah, i've dumbbells seen up, that yeah dumbbells up for 75 pounds another 540 pounds in troy plates uh an elite FTS, full power rack, um, yeah, and bands and chains and yeah. whatever else. A true lifter's paradise, right? Right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It was like the big push was um, the first lockdown. Um, we had a lot of our equipment over at a, a gym that we did personal training at. And when everything shut down, I looked at John and I was like, we need to move our stuff like right. now. And right. so we got all our stuff out and we <laughs> took a lot of trips to tractor supply for the rubber floor mats and all that stuff. And I mean, we've really built it up over the last like year, almost a year now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that it, it's, it's really been wild to see the amount of, I guess, uh, necessity that uh, people don't realize how important training is, or at least it, if they didn't, they realize it now, you know, especially with how, Absolutely. how COVID has changed and, and uh, how important it is for mental health. I feel like that there's a lot of people that are forgetting that aspect of it, you know, I mean, and, and you're, Absolutely. you're, you can probably speak to that better than anybody. Right. I mean, so what, what has training done for you in, in battling, you know, your PTSD? It literally has saved my life. Um, before I found like CrossFit and all of the powerlifting, I was on the verge of suicide. Like really? I was in a very dark place. Um, I would lock myself up in my room and literally sleep the days away. Um, because like the, the big thing was I ended up losing my job because of my disability. I was having massive panic attacks almost every day. I made a joke, like I'm like a fainting baby goat because like I could be just talking to you normally and then anxiety would hit me and I would just pass out and without warning. <laughs> and so like going through that and feeling like I was at the very like low, low, um, once I found CrossFit, I mean, it brought out that fire in me again and got me like functioning, um, being more comfortable being around people in like different situations. Um, so it, it absolutely has saved my life because I was ready to just give up there for a while. 
Now, how long have you been lifting with John? Because you said he, yeah. you, you found him at CrossFit, is that correct? Well, no, I actually <laughs> found him. <laughs> so I was doing CrossFit okay. um, at a gym, but I was doing competitive programming. And so the gym that I was at, they like didn't have the support that I needed to be able to like come in when I could and do my, my programming. Cause I'd be in the gym for like three, four hours at a time. And he happened to be a manager over at this gym that's 24 hours. And they have like a whole CrossFit set up in one of their other locations. And so I walked in and he was there and he annihilated me with five pound dumbbells and <laughs> I, I gave her a quick tour and then at that gym you know we used to pitch intro sessions and i'm i'm pretty big on like functional movements corrective exercises and stuff like that basically i get broken a lot <laughs> um you know but i could see a lot of the crossfitters are all all very you know front dominant you know heavy upper trap shoulders rolled forward very quad dominant you know so that, that very first like half hour you know, we took some five pound dumbbells and we just so did bad. some really strict, you know, back workout, like, you know, 45 degree shoulder press, reverse flies, rear delt flies, just some stuff like that to flatten out her scaps and get her into that low traps. And she was crying. I was so and, mad because it's like, I could like clean and jerk over 200 pounds and like, here's these five pound dumbbells. I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> and you said to yourself, that's a guy I want to be around more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, he humbles me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, the, the, one of the things that I, I think is always cool in a lot of the stuff that you post on, uh, on your Instagram is just how you guys, uh, you guys seem to fit really well together, especially with a lot of your training videos. And so mm -hmm. what's it like, um, you know, because they say those that train together, stay together, you know, can you, can you kind of talk about that, that adage and, and what it's like having somebody, um, you know, with you all the time and, and really pushing you to the to the top? Well, if it's not too much, I'll let her give her side and then I'll give my side. <laughs> that works. Absolutely. We can do that. So, um, it's, it's really awesome. Um, just being able to support each other and like understand the ins and outs of the sport, you know, because you, you talk to other people that aren't involved in powerlifting and they're like, that's crazy. Like, why would you do that? You know, and like having a partner that does it with me, it, it does push me because it's like, you know, he, he starts excelling at stuff. And it's like, well, I want to like get stronger too. Like, you know, and stuff like that. It's just, and like being able to go to training together, it's, it's nice because, you know, it's our escape from reality and we get to kind of do it together. And our, our team is just, amazing um the atmosphere we, we're a family like we're i can't even say that they're friends like i mean they are friends but they're more of like extended family and it's just it's an awesome and, and it's very interesting i mean to understand or put it in perspective a little bit like our coaches doug and candy are husband and wife mm -hmm. okay. you know they live together you know they compete together you know they're both national reps we're state reps um but there's it, it's awesome it's it's fantastic but there's a lot of a lot of back and forth you know if i have a good day and she doesn't have a good day i'm like ah oh, pr today and, like, yeah. and she's like oh this sucks <laughs> and but the, the same thing is you know we're very technical and very critical people so like hey and uh, we i lose sight a little bit of hey you did a good job of this this and this is just like keep your chest up you know <laughs> your heels are coming up and like we get into arguments over stuff like that because it's not easy to coach each other. Sure. And, and, it, and it relates back to our coaches. A lot of time if Candy is doing something, Doug will come over to me and be like, you know, go fix Candy. Because we'll bite each other's heads off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, struggling on a bench and both of us will do it. Don't touch my bar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, so. I posted some videos where I'm like yelling at him, don't touch it, I got it. <laughs> like. So there's, I mean, it's, it's amazing, but you know, there's the little, the little snippets and the little fights and the little kind of catty stuff between us too. But <laughs> me you know, prep at the same time. Oh, well, I can only time. imagine. I can only imagine on that. We roll with all of it, and it's not like your partner's never going to be like, "Why were you at the gym for three hours?" Yeah. Or you know, 
her back's hurting, my back's hurting, you know, rather than you coming home to somebody that doesn't lift, trying to get him to like, hey, I need you to dig your thumb in my QL. Yeah. Well, what's your QL? <laughs> like, th there's an understanding there. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of this sometimes, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's a very good flow. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the rivalry, like I'm Army, he's Marines, Coast Guard. Oh, like, geez. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, holy cow. CrossFit powerlifting. Yeah, CrossFit so, powerlifting. Yeah. She, uh, she compromised a little bit and came over to the powerlifting side. Um, but amazingly, hasn't hasn't lost a beat. I mean, she can step in on just about any any CrossFit workout or wad that they do over there. And if not beat them, you know, hang with the best of them. That's great. Um, matter of yeah, fact, she that. just, they did a birthday, like a, a, just an acid bath cardio thing. And she beat our owner, who's a CrossFit Games athlete. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, so. Yeah, so she I want a free pair of nobles. <laughs> she still has her engine. You know, she has strength. You know, now we both still actually work at that CrossFit gym. So we kind of try and dissem disseminate a little bit of that down. Like, you guys need to take a break every once in a while. You need a little bit of rest. But that community just wants to push all the time and they don't yeah. get it. Not that yeah. we don't want to push all the time, but, you know, she'll make me take a break. I'll make her take a break. Our coaches will make us take a break. They're just whole ham all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That it, it really is interesting. And as I've had the opportunity to talk to so many different people, the just in general, the fitness community is so, like, like you said, Landry, it's just the whole community just seems very – family oriented in a sense that everybody always is trying to look out for one another. And I think it's because everyone's always trying to attain like the best version of themselves, you know, in, in so many ways and not just physically, but, but like you said, like mentally as well, it, you know, I, I I lift at four in the morning and it really sucks to get up at four in the morning, but the, <laughs> the, the greatest feeling is, is a sense of accomplishment, even if it was a really crappy day, you know, mm -hmm. just the fact that you know that you've done something that a lot of other people, they just don't do. Right. And, and, and I think that's one of the biggest things that you're seeing, especially with, with COVID and everything else, you're seeing the differences in how it impacts people who don't perform any type of exercise versus those who do. It still impacts people, but um, maybe not as long, you know, and it's just something that... Um, I feel like it isn't being hit, you know? One of, one of my friends um, who's actually, uh, he's employed by Amazon. You know, he's, he does stuff with, you know, their marketing and their computers. And he's one of the guys that tracks everything that we buys and does the targeted advertising. But he would, he would be in here and, or with me and training at like 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, he told me flat out that, you know, the same thing you said, it sucks to get up that early, but he would sit down in his meetings, you know, whether it be virtual or whether it be actually in person and he'd look around the table and he'd feel some empowerment. Like who, who, who are the rest of these guys were up at six o'clock in the morning, yeah. you know, squatting 400 yeah. pounds or benching right. 300 pounds or doing any of that, yeah. you know, so it just gave him, even if it was a personal, just a confidence thing, it just gave him that edge to go out there and finish the rest of the day. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, it, that's something that for me, uh, especially it, it leaves your whole rest of your day open too, you know, so if there's oh, yeah. anything that just shows up or pops up, um, you've already got that accomplished. And, and just, it's a, it's a very much of that Jocko Willink attitude of, you know, if, if your day sucks, good. If your day's great, good. You know, it's all about just trying to, you know, kind of push through it. Oh, yeah. What has, um, you know, your training done with respect to your kids? You know, you, you mentioned that uh, you've got a 12-year-old. I, I, I can't remember if you said you had any more, but. No, nope, just the one. <laughs> just the one. So what has that done um, in, in the eyes of, of, I can't remember, did you say it was a son or daughter? Son. Okay. Gabriel. Okay, so so what's that done for him? I mean, obviously he's seen you work out, right? Has that had any kind of impact or influence on him? Um, well, he's not really a sports kid, um, but he thinks it's really cool that I'm as strong as I am and John's as strong as he is. Um, he came out of his shell a little bit. We took him with us to Pittsburgh um, to the Kobuki Open that, sh that she won, 
you know, just recently in the past. Yeah. And he actually came to the competition and it's, he's very introverted. So, you know, the agreement was if he, if he was able to wear a star Wars helmet, he would come. <laughs> he was Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the end of the thing, I mean, he's featured on Jessica Martinez's story, you know, <laughs> with, his, with, his, with his Boba Fett helmet on. Yeah. You know, but then we go to dinner with everybody and the helmet comes off and he kind of starts to open up and things like that. And, you know, the, he's totally surprised when we're sitting around the dinner table and I bring up a question just to include him of, you know, the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> what weapon would you pick? And, you know, Kyle from Kotobuki just fires off with, well, I'm going to grab the machete out of the trunk of my car. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I try and get him to feed in and integrate with those people. And he's getting more comfortable with those mm -hmm. people. But yeah. the, the athletics thing might come a little bit down the road. But he's we're not we're not pushing him, pushing him to me, do it. But he's yeah. just he's like I like science. Like science is cool, mom. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, good. That good for him. We need more people like that. Right. We need more people like that. That's uh, he's like an old soul. It's so funny. Like yeah. you talk to him, you think he was like much older because he's just he's a very much a realist. Yeah. <laughs> and, like so, like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, all that stuff. Like. Forget about it. He's that kid that's like, that's not real. Like, <laughs> like you can't say it, that. It, it just warms my heart when, you know, he hears him say something on the news and he looks over and he's like, well, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Related oh to God. COVID and the stuff that's going on right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Well, it, even if it's not showing now, I, I can, I, I can bet you uh, that it's, it's having a deeper impact probably than, than you know at the moment. Cause just having a little kids, um, my own little kids, that they they bring out the best and the worst in you, <laughs> all, right. at the same, all at the same time. And so, it is pretty interesting. They're the most humbling people of your own self. So, uh, it, it is it is interesting. So, uh, now that the the competition. So, tell me, because you you've broken a few records now too, correct? Yes. Um, and you broke the it was Ohio State one, right? That one was yep. that one was recent, correct? So I broke all of those um, in my February first um, national qualifier um, last year, and then I rebroke them at nationals, and I got a world record on the bench press. Great. Um, and then I just rebroke all of my old ones, except for my bench record um, at the Kabuki um, at the end of October. So I'm like just kind of breaking my own records at this point. <laughs> you know, what's the, what's the feeling like when, when something, you know, I mean, that's a pretty big stinking deal, right? So when something like that happens, you know, what's, what's your thought process going into a meet where, you know, you've already performed so well the last time, you know, can you talk, talk to me about the, the mental preparation that goes into that? Um, I like, <laughs> he probably, I drive him nuts. Cause like, I like overanalyze and like, I get like, so like focused in and it, it, I think it like, it put like a, a greater sense of pressure on me, but like in a good way, mm -hmm. like, I, I do better under pressure. Um, so knowing, okay, I just came out of nationals the beginning of September. I'm going to do this meet at the end of October. You know, my numbers were this at nationals. I'm like, I want to at least hit what I hit or better, you know? And so I didn't really, um, I didn't really have an official prep for my last one that I did, which I think kind of helped take some of that, like the nerves out of it and stuff like that. Cause I was already ready for nationals and I don't know. I just, I went into Kabuki just like, you got to own this girl. Like, come on. <laughs> like and My, my job kind of in all this is to kind of keep her a little more grounded, keep her a little more level headed. Like, I don't like it when she gets in her head and starts chasing the numbers and stuff like that. I just, I think it creates anxiety. Yeah. And then a little bit of separating the difference. Like we went to nationals with the sincere intent on her winning nationals, which happened. Mm -hmm. So then when, when it was suggested, you know, hey, Kotobuki's coming up, you could probably win that pretty easy. It's like, that's where my anxiety goes up because this is my partner. And there's only, a, there's only one good outcome. And that's that she goes and, you know, beats her numbers and wins the whole thing. 
Because if she just goes and wins the whole thing but doesn't beat her numbers, she's not going to be happy. Yeah. If she goes and doesn't win, even though she beats her own numbers, she's not going to be happy. <laughs> you know, and then, then there's the, the worst aspect, like we just have a bad day, which happens, mm -hmm. and she's not happy, you know. <laughs> and then there's the separation between like, all right, nationals. We're going to win nationals. We're going to set national records. Kabuki Open, I mean, that, that, was, a, that was a cash for me. You already got the records. Let's go win this and take the money yeah. home. I don't care about setting records. If you need a, a certain number and it's not your max to win, we're going to hit that before we go for that that third or that fourth attempt. So. Sure. It yeah. worked out well, though, because, I mean, I, I had a big squat PR at Kabuki because nationals I hit 385, which was a PR then. Um, and then at Kabuki, I ended up hitting 402. And I, I, like, I've been chasing that 400 squat for a while now. I wanted that so bad, and it happened. So I was so happy. Um, and then I ended up, my bench was a little bit lower, but I figured it, it would be because of the squat, like being heavier. Mm -hmm. So I hit 231 on bench. Um, my world record's 237, so I wasn't too far off. Um, and then I PR'd my deadlift um, at nationals. I did 429, uh, and I hit 440. Uh, pretty easily on my third attempt deadlift so and I bettered my total by over 20 pounds so I was really happy <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a really good increase absolutely yeah. what is it like um, I mean have you had other women come up to you and talk to you about powerlifting or or you know what's what's those conversations been like because I'm sure that you've had people reach out to you and just kind of talk to you about the process and you know the the and one of the things i always wanted to talk to you about was the the fear of you know looking like a monster which isn't the case that that's right. never it's it's never the case and um you know what's the what's the stigma like behind behind being a female power lifter um so, I mean, for the most part, I've had a lot of, like, really positive um, interaction with that. I have a lot of women that reach out to me and just, like, say, like, I motivate them, like, or I got them into the gym or got them into powerlifting because they saw, like, what I do. And um, the only negative stuff, and it really doesn't happen very often, it seems like it comes more from the guys. Really? That they're just, like... Because they can, because you can squat more than they can. <laughs> right. It's like, I actually have a shirt from uh, Frank Daddy. It's like the caution triangle, and it says uh, "intimidate uh, weak men." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, that, and that, that really hasn't happened much. But every once in a while, you get the like, you're gonna end up being a dude, and like, you, you know, you got too much muscle, and like this and that. But like women, I get really positive feedback like they're like oh my gosh i love how you're built like we go, to, we go to lowe's or home depot or any other stores and i mean at least every trip you know somebody is pulling her aside or us aside and like oh my god you guys you guys must work out so much and then they'll focus on <laughs> like, you look amazing <laughs> so the, I, I don't think that the there's the stigma is as big as we think mm -hmm. sure. i think the stigma like just from what i see is you know, personal training in general in the fitness with the female side is women are certain women are afraid to lift yeah. because they think if they lift they'll get, get big and bulky. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a it's just a misconception. Yeah. But I think that is narrow. I think women are seeing that not to be true. Um, the ones that still do kind of feel that way are some of the ones that suffer with the body dysmorphia yeah. and, and more of the eating disorder side of things. Not not generalizing either one, right. but just there's there's a little disconnect kind of up in their head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I I think I think you hit the nail right on the head there. The 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 one thing too I think that's been really good with social media is the I mean I, I think you're seeing more and more women get into actual resistance training more than ever before. It's not just I'm going to run 10 miles and use five pound dumbbells and just curl. You're seeing right. more women than ever before actually bench pressing squatting deadlifting mm -hmm. and and doing the whole realm uh, of just general resistance training and i think they're finding out 
I'm actually not getting enormous. I don't look like a Lou Ferrigno or somebody else. You know, I don't look like a, you know, I don't look like a giant. And and it, they're finding out that it not only uh, shapes your body to your size, uh, you actually look really, really good. Oh yeah. Uh, so the majority, the, the majority, surprisingly or not, the majority of our team at Alpha is female. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, and that that proves it right there that you're seeing, um, you know, there's th that whole that whole wave of people that are just coming into it, and now, you know, and I think it's people like like you as well, Andrew, that are helping tell people, even if you're not actually telling them, you're showing them like you can do this and be really strong, and and you still look really good for for yeah, you know, for for your body type, and so it's something that. I think is a really good health promotion as well, you know? And so oh, yeah. it's, it's something that uh, we definitely need more of, but what, um, I, I guess the, what does your training look like? You know, how, how many days a week, what's, you know, if you're going to prep for, uh, you know, let's say a, a meet, what, what does your training schedule look like right now? So we run on, it's Sunday um, is our like heavy bench. Um, Monday is an off day, but I generally will do conditioning on Mondays. Um, nothing more than like 20, 30 minutes. Um, and it's usually always like body weight stuff. Um, Tuesday is squat day. Uh, Wednesday is another rest day, but I usually do conditioning on Wednesdays. And then Thursday is like our dynamic upper body day. So we just do a lot of like kind of bodybuilding stuff um or like specialty bar work um and then and fridays is deadlift and then saturday is kind of like an optional leg day or conditioning and so we'll do that um when i'm in meat prep i will keep the conditioning in there until like the last two weeks and then i cut that out and it really kind of tapers down like i'll come in and just do like my opener or um, my second attempt and then like minimal, minimal accessories. But normally like right now, for instance, I mean, we're usually in the gym from 1030 until about two. Um, we do our main lift of the day and then like annihilate ourselves with accessories. And I honestly feel like that's like the biggest thing that's helped me. And just like our team is known as like being a bunch of freaks. Cause like everywhere we go, like everybody on our team is really strong. Like, Doug and Candy are both world record holders, national champions, like, you know, um, and all the girls on our team are really strong. And it's like people come in from other gyms um, to visit and they like do a training session with us. And they're like, y'all are crazy. Like, are you serious? <laughs> like we just picked up a new guy on the team and it's hilarious. Cause like he comes on Tuesdays, he's from Michigan and he'll like do the squats and then he kind of like wanders around <laughs> a little lost. He's like, I have to do what now? <laughs> like, like a whole list of accessories. We're like, get at it, man. Let's go. <laughs> our, our, our big three, we generally all do together. Mm -hmm. You know, like myself, you know, her and Doug will either squat on the same rack or pull on the same bar, you know, just depending on the weights. The girls will, will squat on a different rack or a different bar. You know, sometimes we have all four racks going. You know, and then, but then after that, you know, we all just pretty much turn two on the accessories that are usually written up. And Lucas has found himself kind of just standing there like, really? We're doing it's more? like, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, Off-season training on Tuesday, we did 72 squats. Wow. It was, you know, three sets of 12 warm-up and then three sets of 12, you know, working weight. Yeah. yeah. And then I, there were and i and i tapped out I, my quads are so fried because i'm just coming off of doing singles mm -hmm. um i couldn't hit the leg press but it was another four sets of 20 on the leg press after that you know at with, like 600 pounds with, so. <laughs> with, with, with some other with other work thrown in there yeah. um, i'm pretty sure lucas messaged and he couldn't walk yeah. <laughs> but, alpha is not for the faint of heart <laughs> let's just yeah. say that I, I can imagine that. Yeah, I, I could only imagine what it would do to me. Oh, but, uh, I mean, we've, we've got a ton of experience from, I mean, Doug was on the Army powerlifting team. Doug's mentor was Steve Goggins. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know? yeah. yeah, so so Doug has trained with Steve Goggins. Obviously, Dave Tate's from Toledo. 
you know, they all, all used to be over at the fitness stop together. Yeah. Um, he's, he's been exposed to a lot of people. I mean, um, we've been exposed to Joe, I mean, Sullivan. Joe Sullivan, you know, Casey Williams, you know, Curtis Miller, um, recently Kyle from uh, Kabuki, you know, so we, I mean, obviously Garrett Fears running around, um, Brandon Franks. I mean, so we, we have access and we've been exposed to a lot of really high level, really knowledgeable people, you know, so it's always kind of expanding and growing like what we're doing and integrating new cues and everything, always trying to make things better. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. When this is, this is something that I've struggled with. So I'll be interested to hear your, your answers to it. When somebody comes to you and let's say they're plateauing at a, at a certain lift, let's, we'll just use the squat for example, right? Somebody comes to you and they say, well, I'm plateauing on my squat. What is your recommendation or what would you take them through to try to help them break that? I mean, it's, I mean, I guess, honestly, to, to be fair to your question, without actually seeing them squat mm -hmm. and seeing what they're doing, it's really hard to say. Sure. I mean, we, we just got um, just hit with some new things about just setup and looking at the finer details and things like that. For instance, like when you walk out of the squat rack, do you check your feet? Like, will you, you phys will you physically look down and check to make sure your feet I are do. Alive? Yes, I do. Yeah. So we're getting away from doing any of that because we spend so much time, you know, cranking in under the bar, right. getting our chest as high as we can, getting that back set that even if it's just a little peak, you know, you that lose some of the openness of that chest, the shoulders roll down, and it really doesn't matter with the load on your back. You're not going to get as open or as extended as you do. Mm -hmm when you unrack it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've like my, some of my young lifters, like came back from um, Pittsburgh with some of that stuff and just cleaning up the, basically the setup. And my lifter was like, well, we used to be able to look down. Why can't I look down anymore? And, you know, was a little resistant to some of that. So, I mean, I'm not really answering your question, but it depends on really like what their yeah. sticking point is. Like, like yeah. my bench is pretty much plateaued at, you know, I hit 385 in my last meet, 402 just wasn't quite there. I can blast just about anything about six to eight inches off of my chest. And then I, then I hit that wall. So in the off season, board work, pin presses, you know, tricep work, stuff to just lock that out. Yeah. You know, if somebody's doubling over because like they're squatting. So when it gets to a certain point, let's say after it gets past 450, it turns into a good morning at some point yeah. and sometimes they get buried and sometimes they don't. I would say that that's probably work on the setup and work on getting your chest up, getting your hips underneath you. So you're not pushing your butt back. So you're going straight down and you're stacked on top of yourself the whole time. So yeah. Yeah. The big yeah. thing would be just like watching them squat and see kind of where they're, they're breaking at. And then you can really kind of dial it in and, you know, assess from there, like, okay, we need to work on your glutes. We need to work on your hamstrings. Like that's kind of like one of the things that we're working on with me now that I'm in the off season is like, I have a big squat, but I want a bigger squat. Mm -hmm. So I need to get my glutes and my hamstrings stronger. Cause that's kind of where I'm weaker at. Cause like my low back is probably at this point stronger than my glutes are right now. Um, Cause my low back will take over. And so we're really like, we were training this morning and it was all like glute focused. So that's kind of what we would end up doing with somebody else if they were plateauing. It's like, okay, let's see where your, your weak points are and we're gonna target those. Mm -hmm. Like Tana yesterday, you know, they come in from out of town, you know, they, they're kind of, her friend runs in our ref crew, you know, they've been at some of our meets. Um, severe lack of like thoracic extension, like very good no deadlift, movement very, very, very good deadlift. She's a good puller good leverages, you know, stands up with everything, but that we've got that round to the upper back. So her, her, her lumbar is not even vulnerable, but if she can get to the point where she can extend that, I mean, that's, you know, that's not, a game changer. That's a game changer. I mean, that yeah. could be 50 pounds on her deadlift right off the bat. She can get that thoracic extension, pull a little more slack out of the bar, not to mention even at the top end, the more you're rounded up top, 
tr more trouble you have getting those shoulders back, locking those yeah. hips up. So, yeah. um, you know, not, th those are simple questions that like a lot of people ask, like, well, Hey, I plateau here. What do I need to do? It's like, well, it's more complicated than that. We got to look at it. Yeah. What has just training in general, how, how has it crossed over into life in general? You know, ha, ha, what have you been able to to take from the weight room and apply it to life? Um, I, I would say for me, like more confidence in just like everyday stuff. Um, because like I said, in the past, when I was like at my lowest, like I couldn't even go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, I would order everything and have it delivered so I didn't have to go out because I, I could not mentally handle it. Um, and like being in this environment, being around so many positive people and um, just getting the confidence from the lifting, it definitely translates into outside life. Now it's like, I can go to the grocery store. Like I still have a little bit of anxiety, but it's like, shoot, I can squat 400 pounds. I can go to the grocery store. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I can handle this. Like, you know, it's, it's like, you're stronger than this. You can do this, yeah. you know? So it, it, I think it translates a lot and we get, we do so many things that are uncomfortable in the gym. Mm. It makes it easier to do things that are uncomfortable outside of the gym, yeah. things yeah. that we don't want to do. And it doesn't matter if it's like something physical that you have the endurance to do it, or if it's something that mentally takes that challenge, you know? Mm -hmm. If you're really dedicated and it's on your programming, like you said, four in the morning, you don't always have the best workouts. Yeah. But it's, it's written in your program. So feeling like it or not feeling like it, yeah, you good. just do it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a whole lot easier to convince yourself to like feeling like it or not feeling like it. There's a task to be, completed you just go do it yeah. you know you don't you don't wait around for it yeah that that mental discipline that uh like you said you just you just have to grind it out whether you mm -hmm. like to or not and more than likely by the time you're done with it you're gonna you're gonna be glad that you did it even if it yeah. wasn't the greatest of days um like you said that your your friend at amazon like you could sit in a meeting then and be like you know i've done more than you know, 90% of the people in this room already. And it, yeah. even if it was a bad day, you know, you've still accomplished something that um, not very many people are willing to do, you know, mm -hmm. and it, but it doesn't even have to be in the morning, you know, we're grinding out a whole work day and then going to the gym at the end of the day, you know, those, those I think are, are almost harder to do because yeah. at the end of the day, man, it's just like, all you want to do is sit down. And, and I couldn't <laughs> imagine working a full a full day and then saying okay well i've got to go squat 500 pounds now yeah. no that way just, uh -uh. that just sounds <laughs> that just sounds awful to me um yeah e even more so than saying i gotta squat 500 pounds at four in the morning so it's <laughs> like <laughs> it's i guess pick your poison but I, I i would agree though i mean i think it is it's something that um for me over time and that was one of the things that through uh i guess the morning lifter that i've i've kind of established is that the, the strength and leadership side, it, like it all applies to the weight room and there's so much of it that can be applied uh, to just life in general. And it, yeah. it can really transform your own mental capacity to, like you said, you know, if I can squat 400 pounds, there's no reason I can't go out. And so it's, it, you're in a way teaching yourself to overcome your own weaknesses through mm -hmm. the discipline in the gym. And so it, it is something um, especially for, for people who are struggling with PTSD. Um, I, I guess it brings up a, another question. So for other people that are suffering from PTSD, um, like yourself, who maybe haven't tried weightlifting, what would you say to them to try to convince them to just give it a shot? Um, I would, I would say like, I, I would obviously give my kind of background, my story in it where, you know, I was afraid of people. I was afraid to go out. And then when I got involved in the powerlifting and the CrossFit, the community that comes with it, just with that alone, having people with a, a positive common interest, you know, it, it's amazing what that does for your mental your mental state. Um, and then the lifting, I mean, it just it just helps build that you know 
confidence that you might have lost or never had and gives you a sense of purpose. Yeah. That was like the biggest thing for me, I think, um, because going from the military to like nothing, I was like, I feel like a waste of space. I'm not contributing anything. And if you can get into the weightlifting and everything, like it's amazing what that does. Like, especially like I look back at like the lockdown, like if I didn't have my involvement in the lifting and all of that, like that would have been really hard on me because yeah. my way of coping before was isolation and that's not healthy. And right. so now I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm forced into isolation now. I got to keep doing what keeps me healthy mentally. Yeah. Um, and I would tell other people, you know, it's, it's an amazing community. Like, even if you're not a competitive athlete, I mean, I look at the, the meets that I've done, my competitors, everybody's so nice and so encouraging and they help each other. Even though you're going up against them, they're like cheering you on and just so positive. And it's yeah. like, you don't have that in everyday life a lot of times. Like, you know, I came from the world of Verizon after I got out of the military and it's like, I didn't, I felt like I didn't fit in there. They would be like, yo, you're too military because like I'm very direct and like very regimented and they'd be like why aren't you more bubbly and like this and all that I'm like, I, <laughs> like I don't know yeah but it's like in the lifting community like everybody just like embraces you and yeah. it's it's wonderful like I and, love it and I yeah. think while like while people do compete against themselves or compete against each other everybody is actually competing against themselves like you touched on earlier that bigger better version of yourself yeah you know you're, you're chasing your own numbers. I mean, she's fortunate in, you know, where she's at with this, that she is highly competitive. Her numbers are huge. She is right there, you know, at the top, you know, being a little older, being at 40, soon to be 41, you know, I got to crush it pretty hard <laughs> with the young guys, you know, to, to place in the open, let alone, you know, some of those guys win, yeah. win a best lifter. Yeah. Now, I think I can hang pretty good with the 40, 40, <laughs> 41 year olds, but I kind of look at it from the mindset, like I'm here to compete with myself. Yeah. I'm here to throw it down and, you know, put it all on the, on the platform. Yeah. And I think that's what, like, everybody kind of embraces. That's why everybody is so friendly. I think everybody has a little bit of that mentality. So it's like, hey, if they do better than me, but I did the absolute best I could, you know, that's, that's where it's at. Yeah, I, I could imagine it would, be, it would be kind of hard. I mean, I've never competed, but it's always fun to kind of watch. Uh, I, I would imagine it would be kind of difficult to, to leave a meet even though you lost, but knowing that you PR'd on all three of your lifts, like there's still a lot of success in that, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's something that, you know, you're looking at in a lot of ways, I guess the silver lining of it, but I mean, you've improved yourself. And I mean, ultimately I feel like that's really what it's all about. The competition oh, yeah. I, it seems like it's so much, yes, it's important, but like you said, it's, it's a, the event in and of itself is the greater of the good, I feel, than just, yeah. you know, the competition. You, you always go into anything wanting to win, but the experiences and, and like you've mentioned, all of the people that you've kind of made connections with and networked with and, and have met along the way, um, I mean, those are, are just so important and so critical. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's, it's so cool because like meeting all those people, like all the knowledge that gets passed around and everything. And it's kind of fun. Like he's got some young guys that kind of like fanboy over some of our our friends. And it's like, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, we were hanging out with Joe last week. Like, yeah. And they're like, what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. And it's like, we don't think anything of it because that's just like normal. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I got a couple more questions here before we uh, we close up. Um, one is since you've got so many cool stuff, what is your favorite piece of equipment to lift with? Mm. Mm. I am really digging uh, the Kabuki Cadillac bar. Okay, um, it's super humbling. Um, I actually <laughs> won this at the Kabuki Open. Okay. Um, thankfully so then john didn't have to buy it yeah but uh, <laughs> um we do this um a lot like on our upper uh dynamic days yeah um 
it crushes me and it's wonderful. Like I get the craziest pump out of it. Um, you know, I, I have a big bench, but like, I can't <laughs> even come close to doing what I can do on a straight bar with that bar. Like it, it, it crushes my soul and it, I love it. Like we will do a lot of times cause there's three different hand positions. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll do like two sets of 12 on each position. And like, I can only put a full plate on and that's it. Like, she can only put a full done. plate on. Most of my clients use a quarter. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, compared to like, you know, benching like 240 or whatever, like that's. Most of my adult male clients use a quarter. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, then they're, that's saying something. The then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's saying something then, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got two questions left. So. Sure part of my my motto i guess is it's everything that i'm trying to do with this is it's all related around strength and leadership so i always like to ask people at the end give me your best definition or your your best phrase on 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 the two so uh i'd like to know what's what is your what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of of strength never giving up okay that's good i don't know if i've had anybody that have has given me a, a duplicate yet. So really? that's, yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the cool things that I like about it because everybody's definition is so drastically different because it fits like it fits you, you know, it fits, mm -hmm. it fits your life and your personality. So, okay. How about leadership? Leadership, I uh, lead by example. Yeah. Um, you know, being a positive influence and not feeling like you need to lead with like the iron fist, but keeping a positive vibe and, you know, living by what you preach. Absolutely. Um, be good. I, I got to add a little something to that. And this is comes from other people that she meets, but it's, I, I think it's also about being humble mm -hmm. and, and she's very humble. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's up there to where she's run across other lifters that, that are like, Oh my God, that's Landry. Like I can't, and so she, weird, she's yeah. very, she's very <laughs> helpful. She's very, you know, caring and, and, and it just, it translates to the community. It doesn't matter, you know, whether it's the guy squatting 800 pounds or the guy squatting 135 pounds, everybody is willing to help each other out. We have very few assholes. <laughs> Excuse my language, but. Oh, hey, in, hey, hey don't, in, there, there's no filter here. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> in in this in this community yeah so like i i see that leadership wise coming out a lot where people are intimidated and she's able to calm them down and make them feel comfortable so she can teach them things yeah like there's a girl that just started training with us that she's purposely cutting weight so she doesn't have to be in my weight class anymore <laughs> but i was helping her with her lifts um the other week and she messaged me and it was so like so sweet like I didn't think anything of it when I was doing it but she's like you're such an amazing lifter and you're so nice like you're so helpful she's like it's just so cool that you know you're approachable and you're willing to kind of like help others and like pass on knowledge and things like that because yeah. it's like not only am I an athlete but I'm also a coach you know so it's just kind of embedded yeah. in me. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and I think that's the thing, like, like you said, John, I mean, nobody wants to be around an asshole to begin right. with. Right. I mean, who you're not going to like the person and then you're going to end up like driving them away anyways. And, right. and so it's, it's the same thing. Like if you've got a, if you've got a trainer that just acts like they know everything um, there, you're just not going to, it's not going to make it fun. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I, that's, I, I think that's a, a, a great, a great definition because, you know, leading by example, it's one of the things where, um, you know, it's like the old Teddy Roosevelt, uh, quote, uh, speak softly, but carry a big stick and it'll take you far, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's, I mean, that's, it's evident, it's evident in, in all the things that you do and, and the videos that you've posted and the things that you shared. And so. I always enjoy, uh, you know, seeing your updates and seeing you succeed. So it's been a lot of fun, um, even though we had never actually met before. So yeah, it, it is really neat to see. And so I, I would tell you to, to keep, keep continuing on with it. And, uh, you know, thank you for the service. And, and I think the most important thing is the, the willingness that you're able to talk about, you know, the, the PTSD and, 
because there are a lot of people out there that are struggling with that. And I think that's super, super important, especially oh, yeah. with uh, some other states that are being a little bit more strict with the lockdowns and things like yeah. that. They're, you're going to see, you know, more people not make it. And so right. I, 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 I applaud you at, you know, being able to talk about that. Cause I, I, I wasn't sure how, um, you know, I was treading lightly. I didn't want to, I didn't want to sure. go too deep because I, I know that those are pretty, uh, pretty personal experiences. So, but I do appreciate you talking about that because I think it can make a big difference. Oh yeah. It's, it's very important. I've tried to kind of create a platform, um, being very open about it and like, trying to show others that like it's okay like you're not the only one and like we can talk about it and there are ways to overcome it um because my big thing is like rehab through fitness i refuse to take medication like mm -hmm. they wanted to put me on all sorts of antidepressants anti-anxiety meds like when i went to the va for the first time they prescribed me 10 different things wow and i'm like i'm not taking any of those and then i just my my therapy is uh, lifting and yeah. it's made me so much better in so many ways. So yeah. that's awesome. I, I, I think it's truly amazing. Okay. Last piece. This is uh, the opportunity for your shameless plug. So how do, <laughs> how, how do people get a hold of you? Anything, anybody that you want to shout out, um, anything that, you know, you want people to follow, how do they get a hold of you to, to follow you? Uh, go for it. Okay, so plugging myself, um, you can find me on Instagram at, at Landry Lifts a Lot. Um, uh, Great Lakes Powerlifting. Um, I run that page, do all the social media stuff on there that has like all our events that we're doing and highlighting different lifters. Um, so if you don't follow them, definitely follow Great Lakes Powerlifting. We also just added, a, there'll be a link added to there where you can go see the whole calendar for the year and sign up for the meets and everything, you know, right through Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Facebook, also Landry Lifts a Lot. Um, and we have a YouTube channel under Alpha Fitness where we post a bunch of content. We're going to start doing a podcast here pretty soon called Time Under Tension. Awesome. Um, so that'll be really cool. That's yeah. in the works now. So great. Yeah. Excellent. Well, looking forward to that. I'll have to make sure to subscribe when it goes live. Definitely. So, all right. Well, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Yeah. Keep, keep doing your thing. We'll you talk. Well. We'll, we'll have to talk again soon. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys later. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.